So everyone today, um, we're gonna have a, a kata today, a kata talk, and um, it's gonna be the three main topics gonna be covered are lori, uh, sangrand, and mm-hmm. the jali mukte. So the talks by um, by Sabji, by Sukundar Singh, Stuki Baba from the UK, and they will be doing the kata bacha today. So by Sabji, to see, shuru kar do. Okay. Wahiguru Ji ka khalsa, Wahiguru Ji ka teji. So we're uh, just gonna do a uh, uh, small job before we start. So if uh, everybody like to uh, join in, ek oankar sat naam karta purkh nirpao nirvair akal murat ajuni saipang gur prasad jap aade sachu Jugade Satchu Happy Satchu Nanak Husi P Satchu Ik Uankar Satanam Karta Purku Nirpaho Nirvaru Akad Murate Ajuni Sapang Gur Prasade Japu Ade Satchu Jugade Satchu है पी साचो नानक होसी पी साचो एक ओंकार सतनाम करता पुरख निरपाव निरवैर अकाल मूरत अजूनी सैपं गुर प्रसाद जप आदे साचो जुगादे साचो है पी साचो नानक होसी पी साचो एक ओंकार सतनाम करता पुरख निरपाव निरवैर अकाल मूरत अजूनी सैपं गुर प्रसाद जप आदे साचो जुगादे साचो है पी साचो नानक होसी पी साचो एक ओंकार सत नाम करता पुरख निरपाव निरवैर अकाल मूरत अजूनी सैपं गुर प्रसाद जप आदे साचो जुगादे साचो है पी साचो नानक होसी पी साचो वाहे गुरु Wahe Guru, 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 Wahe Thank you so much uh, again for having me back. Uh, quite surprised. Uh, usually when I get invited for something, um, I don't usually get a, a call back uh, other than to maybe ask for their money back. But uh, so I uh, feel quite privileged uh, and uh, sort of uh, honoured that I've been asked back uh, to share some Kathabu uh, chat with you guys. Um, so thank you again. And I hope everyone's well and doing good. Um, if you're from uh, the UK, you'd know that we're in our third or fourth, I can't even remember now, lockdown. I think everyone's, I hope everyone's doing well during the lockdown. They've got all the, the essential items at home, like toilet paper. Uh, maybe uh, if you're not from the UK, you may not get that joke. But uh, yes, um, this is what the UK people go crazy for when there's a lockdown <laughs> so anyway uh thank you very much as i said um and uh, as you've heard today's topics we're gonna talk about is one lori and uh also it was sangrand so magidi sangrand so magdam hina uh has started so that's the desi month or Makar Sakranti, also known as. Um, and then also, obviously, quite important that it uh, we in this um, 
sort of month we talk about uh, Muktsar Sa Mela Magi Muktsar. So the Etihas of Muktsar, where the 40 became Charlie Mukte, so as we remember them in Ardas. So Char Savjade, so Panji Piari, Char Savjade, Char Savjade, and Charlie Mukte. So we remember the four, sorry, 40 Mukte as well. So we're just going to talk about that. Now, um, I will try and fit in as much as I can. Uh, and uh, there is a, not a not a lot um, on on Lori to be to be honest. Uh, although it, you can when you actually um, talk about the topic of Lori itself, you can have a uh, a sort of like a long conversation about society and uh, the what we can actually learn from the story of of Lori and how we can uh, apply it, uh, that to to our daily lives and our way of thinking and better ourselves, uh, better our thoughts, how we view the world. So there's a lot you can actually learn from it. Um, uh, but the the story it's, uh, the, uh, itself of Lori is um, that the, at, the, at the heart of it, like the history of it is not that, uh, that long. So I'm just going to start with that then. So Lori the itihas jira now the word actual lori they reckon comes from the two words because they used to be uh, if you go to any indian shop now you'd you'd see like uh, obviously the pumped up prices of atta because you know they think people are going to panic again so um just going uh, uh kind of off topic a little bit but uh, <laughs> the punjabi shopkeepers were proper kind of you know uh making the you know, exploiting people it was i went to buy some uh some pindia which i i like i don't know if you guys like it but uh normally you get them for about four pounds or something uh per kilo or something like that but it's about 15 pounds it was so i was like forget that we just have some uh you know lure joanna you don't get home you know so the sub you know, went up but anyway if you go to uh indian shops now you'll see on the shelves something called a riori Gordi Ryori ya Khandi Ryori is like a, a, a sweet thing. It's like a, um, a Ryori. It's, it's usually a round shape, like a, a, a sweet. And it has a Tel, tel on them. So Tel is like the sesame seed. So it used to be known as Tel Ryori. So, and as time went on, it just became uh, uh, Ryori. And then from that, it kind of like the slang of it just became Lori. So that's the, where the word actually comes from because on that day, people started. Initially, it was people would give uh, sugar and you know sweet stuff like god and things like that uh, to celebrate um, as cushy to each other. But then they started kind of like then uh, you know the corporate people got involved. They're like, well, you can make some money out of this. Why don't we just you know make some stuff from the same sugar and sell it uh, you know a higher price? So anyway, this is what they started doing. Doing so. Uh, you get to that's where it, where it comes from, uh, the name of it, and the 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 story of it. There's the the main one of uh, the significance of Lori. The main one is basically related to uh, something uh, someone called um, Dulla Dulla Patti Dulla Patti Yala. So if you've been to Punjab or even here, like sometimes they have a Lori kind of like theme, you know, parties. There's all, all sorts of themes now. Uh, there might even be a COVID theme party, you never know. Uh, and then uh, they, uh, so the, they sing this particular kind of uh, song, Sundar Mundriye, Ho Tera Kaun Bichara Ho. So there's like a whole big kind of song, and it kind of is related to the, the history of Dulla Pati. So basically, what who Dulla Patti was was actually he belonged to uh, a Patti sort of clan and uh, sort of kind of you know going back to the lineage of some uh, uh, some Rajputs basically. So he was in the times of Akbar, and uh, what had happened was he um, didn't agree with with the with the Mughal Raj, and obviously uh, he did. Uh, you know, Bhagavat. So, as he did uh, uh, Bhagavat, he then um, started his own sort of like little gang 
of of sort of bandits. Now, if you've uh, heard of the story of um, a Robin Hood, say he was like a he was like a Robin Hood, so he would rob the the rich, and then he would distribute that wealth to the to the poor, and um, so he became like quite a hero locally. And uh, the other thing that he would he would do because it was quite common in those days where the sort of like people in charge of areas, um, sort of the harkums of the areas, they were like put in place by uh, by the central kind of, you could say, government. Uh, so like the governors. So they were quite known for, if they were obviously of uh, quite a, uh, you know, low character, they would kind of go around. And if they see like, um, a, you know, a girl of, of age of marriage and things like that, and, and if they would, you know, sort of uh, like them, they would actually abduct them, uh, and then obviously, you know, sort of do the, uh, the you know the things that they would do with them, and then they would you know return them back home. So it was you know sort of sort of like a common practice. And what Dula Patiola would do is would always go and rescue those girls. So this one particular story, and then the song that they sing about. Uh, relates to one of those stories uh, where there was a, a Brahman he was quite poor and he had two daughters called Sundri and Mundri and they were uh, quite good looking and their marriage had been sort of arranged but because the Brahman was poor he didn't have enough money to marry them off so he was just kind of like waiting to get enough money um, but at, so whilst he was waiting the one of those uh, governors actually uh, saw uh, his daughters then basically wanted them uh, for himself, and he found out. And then who would he turn to? He he turned to Dulla Patiala. So then Dulla Patiala then took them back, uh, and so he basically took them under his protection, and then uh, spoke to the family of the the boys who they were engaged to, and then arranged the whole wedding. And then he got them married off, and then he cut a long story short uh you know so they were safe and then you know they lived heavily happily ever after and then from that day onwards they and every single year then because it, it happened at night so in, they had to happen at night because otherwise the authorities uh, would have found out and then they lit the fire that day and then uh, obviously around that fire they got married and then it kind of like became tradition and so every year they cel- celebrated um that day and they would sing that song Dulla Patiala. So he got kind of like got uh, sort of associated with that. So every single year that's what they that's what they would do. That's one of them. And then the other story that is attached to Lori is the story of uh, Pagat Parhaladji as well. So though most of you are aware uh, that in Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj and in Sri Dasam Granth Sahib Ji he talks about the Pagat Parhalad. So Pagat Parhalad, his father was uh, Harnakas. And Harnakas uh, did a lot of Pagati and he got a uh, boon from from Kaal, from God that, you know, so he may, uh, so he, he kind of like asked for these special things, how he could not be killed. And because it was extremely, so kind of like almost impossible to kill him, he started considering himself as, as Paramatma, as God. Uh, but his son, however, uh, was actually um, a true Pagat, Pagat Parhalad, and uh, he refused to bow to his his father as Paramatma, as God. So to kind of like punish him, uh, Haranakas, his father, thought of ways of, of killing him to kind of... Uh, also, because what was happening was people around, obviously his friends, Parhalad's friends, and other people had started to also doubt Haranakas and because they were saying, like, if his own son doesn't believe him to be Paramatma, then how can we? So he wanted to kind of like quash that. So he tried killing Parhalad. And one of the times he, he, he did that was uh, he had a uh, sister. Her, his, uh, sorry, her name was Holika. And she had this uh, special sort of blanket that uh, was basically fireproof. And if she would hold that over her, if there was like fire anyway, it wouldn't burn her. So the plan was for her to hold 
uh, Prahlad on her uh, in her laps, and basically um, the fire would be lit around around her, and uh, that that way, you know, he'd he'd be punished and he'd die. So what had happened, obviously, when she sat on that fire, the fire actually burnt through that um, that that blanket and actually burnt Holakam, but uh, Prahlad was uh, saved. And then from that day onwards, people started to celebrate that day as, you know, Lori. And they would uh, obviously burn uh, wood at night uh, and they would pray to fire. And then they would also kind of like pray to fire so that uh, just like how no harm came to Prahlad, so no harm would come to their sons either. Okay, so if you noticed, I mentioned the word sons because uh, Lori's kind of really associate used to be quite heavily associated with is if you had uh, a baby boy in the family, then uh, then it was time for happiness, time for kushi, and then they would celebrate its first, you know, Diwali if that came first, and then also they would uh, celebrate Lori for that child, and also if uh, you had got married. And uh, you, uh, and then your marriage was then celebrated. The first year, so first lori that came after you getting married, it was celebrated. So it was mainly associated with if you had a son, and you know, like how the uh, sort of mentality is uh, within um, within our culture, where you have if you have a boy, then it's you know come comes uh, you know the the, the ladu and stuff and things like that. And then, uh, you know, I actually don't like ladus to be honest, unless, you know, they're more tijur. They're really nice, but I like barfi, to be honest. But anyway, um, so it's kind of associated with, with that, uh, which is obviously not kind of, obviously it is definitely not part of, of Sikhi in that sense. Uh, and then that has now, however, has changed in the recent years. People celebrate the birth of, of the girl as well, because... You know, when there's more education now, as more people kind of, you know, get attached to Gurbani, so they kind of uh, find it out more and more and, you know, changing some of these traditions uh, to kind of like make them, you know, come in line with, with Sikhi as well. So, so kind of in a nutshell, that's what's actually celebrated on, uh, on Lori, so every, every year. So, in another way, you can look at the Prahlad story, story and the Harnaka story as good of evil. That when Prahlad was sitting uh, with fire all around him and he was like sure death, he remembered uh, uh, Bhagwan. So he remembered, obviously, uh, Bhagwan to him was Vishnu Bhagwan. So he remembered Vishnu Bhagwan and uh, Vishnu Bhagwan basically saved him. But what we actually take from it is that uh, the whole world is like a aghana whole fire, and then uh, every single day, every single person who's engrossed in this uh, and this 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 fire um, of kaam uh, karo the Lord Mukhaya lust anger, um, you know, more attachment, and then the Maya itself, this illusion, people are getting burnt every single day. And if we remember Akal Purukhavahi Guru every single day in our lives. Just like how Prahlad remembered. And the way you remember is you actually feel the heat. You actually feel uh, that you are in danger. And this is how we truly jump on our as you like to way to connect. Not out of fear of anything, but out of love. So love, like how Prahlad had that, doesn't matter if it's, you know, sort of fire. Now fire destroys everything in its path. Uh, but Prahlad had that faith in Paramatma that it will not destroy me if I remember Paramatma so just like that today what we, we learn from from these uh, sort of stories as well we take you know sort of obviously we put our Sikhi uh, sort of lens on we see things uh, through the Sikhi lens and then every uh, sort of um, the heart that we have uh, there's you know there's something to be learned from it so just like how Paralad had that praying with Paramatma that he actually sat on there having that faith that Pramatma will save him from that fire. So uh, that was the, the story of Lodi. Um, and then, obviously, it was uh, Shangrad uh, on the 14th. And the, the month that has started is uh, 
ਮਾਗ ਦਾ ਮਹੀਨਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਚੜਿਆ ਸੋ ਦੋਸ ਆਫ ਯੂ ਹੂ ਗੋਟ ਟੂ ਦ ਗੁਰਦਰਾ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਔਨ ਔਨ ਦਾ ਡੇ ਯੂ ਵੁਡ ਹੈਡ ਦ ਗਿਆਨੀ ਸਿੰਘਸ ਰੀਡ ਫਰਮ 12 ਮਹਾਨਾ 12 ਮਹਾ ਇਜ਼ 12 ਇਜ਼ 12 ਮਹਾ ਇਜ਼ ਮੰਥ ਸੋ and then this month this desi month that has started is called mag and mag majjan sang sadhua dhuri kar isnan har ka naam tyae sun sabna no kar daan so the tradition of mag so why is maharaj saying that mag in this uh, mag majjan sang sadhua so dhuri kar isnan so why is guru sahib is telling us to go and find in this uh, month find the turi the dust of those sadhus now sadhu is somebody who has control over their karm indre and gyan indre so indre are basically like your hands your feet your mind your tongue uh, so anything that basically uh, has contact with this with this world and they have total control on on them so uh, they don't let them take over so like with the hands they will always do seva tange kam with their tongue they will always speak the the sweetest words they will always uh, speak parmatma's name kisi nu maada nahi bolde so they have that control ha so uh, those are people called sadhe hoye jinna ne sadhya hoya so but maharaj is saying in this month go and find those sadhus and go and do ishnan onna di thudi da naal ishnan karo de 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 charan uh the the dust from their their charan ha na from their feet and then mara se har ka naam tyae sun sabna no kar daan so obviously in this uh, uh month people do sort of daan meeting you know sort of charity work as well but what mara ji is actually saying is that har ka naam tyae sun in this month that uh, hari parmatma who uh, haraya means basically um hari kam har comes from the word hari and hari is the ones who basically brings life to everything so the chetan shakti that brings life to everything uh, that is parmatma so that is hari hai na and then mara is saying meditate on on that naam and the tyae sun and then also listen as well sunna vi ya bolna vi ya tyona vi ya we speak and we listen as well it's very important not to just speak but to listen as well every time you say vai guru you must listen to that that shabd every time you do your part you should be able to hear the part as well it's not like when we start and then our mind kind of say okay i'm off you carry on uh you know and then i'll be back when you is you know doing the slok at the end or well, my kind of pop in in between that's now that's not proper bhakti so mara is saying that har ka naam tyae sun so kanna naal onu suno listen to that that naam and with your rasna with your tongue uh, repeat maharaj's name but in the in the beginning of it guru sahib ji saying mag majan sang sadhua so what basically used to happen before obviously sikhi you know people had different ways of trying to connect to parmatma uh so there was um, uh, actually a a person by the name of pardwaj uh, muni now pardwaj muni was um a spiritual person uh, and he sort of found a way to connect people uh, to parmatma and what they would do what he would do is there's a place called prag pragraj so now pragraj is a place where so in in india you see the there's three main rivers so you have ganga so the ganges as they say jamuna and there's another one called saraswati now and uh, pragraj is place where all three come together two of them that you can actually physically see come together uh, and then the the third one saraswati actually comes uh, together but in a gupt form so that means is that they can't see where it's it's coming from but it it comes and joins those two rivers and they and that place is called um pragraj and then where those three meet is called tribeni so what he would do he would call all like kind of uh sadhus so this guy called pardwaj he would call them and then they would go and then they would go and do ishnan at at that place and even today 
they do Ishnan there as well. People go and do Ishnan. But Guru Sahib is not only talking about the, you know, the cleanliness from, you know, of the physical body, but also the cleanliness of the mind and of within. Now, Pardwaj Muni actually understood that concept. So not only people would come, so he, he, knew, he knew that, obviously, if I say that come and do Thiris Isnan here, they would come and do Isnan and they would use that as a bahana, as an excuse to get people together. And then what he would do, after they were there, then he would basically do Katha and they would talk about Paramatama and they would talk about the Gona, that uh, virtues that you know, they, they need to kind of like obtain and they will talk about how to actually cleanse the mind as well. So they talk about Paramatma, they talk about Nam, they talk about Bhagati. Right? So that used to happen, but it just kind of like got reduced to just having an Ishnan kind of thing. So Guru Sahib is saying that Mag Madhyan Sang Sadhu out there. Guru Sahib is saying, yeah, have, have Ishnan, but also have Ishnan of Sadhan Di Turi, meaning that you should go and uh, do Vichar with the Sadhus. And by Vichar, what Maharaj is actually saying is actually when you sit down and when you do Pagdi with Sadhus, you connect a lot better because their, their energy, so it's just basically like, you know how you have your phone and in certain places the signal is quite weak and in certain places there's no signal. But then you go kind of like, you know, near say like a tower or where there's, you know, good coverage, you get a better signal. So what those Sadhus are, those Sadhus are like those kind of points where they, they are like kind of linked to, uh, to the satellite to Paramatma basically and when you go near them that energy kind of vibrates more and then you connect more and uh, when Guru Sahib talks about being vichar with the sadhus so not only like uh, vichar doesn't just mean that when you talk about things when you talk about spirituality talk about life but it also means that you actually go and sit and you meditate with the sadhu and you go uh, and do Pagdi with sadhus because the true vichar will come from within. So the true vichar will kind of sprout from within. And for you to be able to tap into that, you have to kind of do Simran or Pagdi. So Mara is saying, and that's the, that's the Turi as well. So there's actual physical Turi as well. And that's quite Kalyanakari. So sometimes people sort of um, kind of just say, oh, it's just a metaphor, but it doesn't, it doesn't really matter about the. The Charantur is, you know, itself, like you see people do Jodi and the Seva, that's, that's collecting Sadhu and the Turi. So those people who can't go to those uh, rivers to bathe, Maharaj is saying that you don't have to go to those rivers to bathe. That actually can be done if you just go and do Sad Sangat. So Guru Sahib Ji actually, this analogy Maharaj gives in this Marg Majana Sang Sadhu and Turi Karishanana. So that, that, place, as I said, the Pragraj, Maharaj saying the Pragraj is actually Sad Sangat. So when you go to uh, Pragraj, that is Sadhu Adi Sangat. And then Maharaj then gives an analogy of what those three rivers are, Nadiya. So Guru Sahib is saying that then when you go there, when you go and do Sangat, say if you go to the Gurdara Sahib and you're doing Sangat, you actually go into that Pragraj. And Maharaj is saying when you actually listen to Guruji's Upadesh, when you're listening to Katha, when you're listening to Bani, listen to Simran, that's like Ganga, that's like having Ishnan in that Ganga. And then Maharaj is saying, when you actually start applying uh, those uh, sort of Padesh, those Bichar uh, of, of Vahiguruji, of, of Sadguruji to your life, that's like bathing in uh, Jamuna. And then Maharaj says that the third one, which is a Saraswati, now that is Gupta. So, you can't see it. They say that it, it, you can't see where it comes from and you can't actually see it uh, kind of going into the, the, the rest of the, the two Nadiya. But Maharaj is saying that, that one that is Gopata, that is hidden, that is actually then, if you listen to Sadhguruji's uh, uh, Updesh, uh, Disclosure, um, what Sadhguruji is saying, Sadhguruji's Gurbani, that's bathing in Ganga. Uh, and then if you actually apply it to your life, that's bathing in, in Jamuna. But when you do that, what will happen that from your heart within will come the Saraswati. So the Gupta one that is, that's hidden, that hidden is that Prem in your heart. From your Rida will that you know, blossom uh, and nobody can actually see it. Because when in your heart, when that actual Prem, that love for Paramatma kind of you know, intensifies, you can't see it. So that's what Guru Sahib is saying, 
ਤਾਂ ਮੇਕ ਦਾ ਦ ਦ ਪ੍ਰਾਗ ਰਾਜ ਐਂਡ ਮੇਕ ਦਾ ਦ ਤ੍ਰਿਬਾਣੀ ਦ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਨਦੀਆਂ ਐਂਡ ਦੈਨ ਡੂ ਇਸ਼ਨਾਨ ਇਨ ਸਾਧੂਆਂ ਦੀ ਤੂੜੀ ਐਂਡ ਗੋ ਟੂ ਸਾਧ ਸੰਗਤ ਐਂਡ ਦੋਸ ਸਾਧੂਸ ਐਂਡ ਯੂ ਨੋ ਸਰ ਆਫ ਡੂ ਹੈਵ ਦਾ ਦਾ ਇਸ਼ਨਾਨ ਸੋ ਥਿਸ ਇਜ਼ ਲਾਈਕ ਦ ਦ ਮੈਸੇਜ or uh, in this month as also people would tend to go to different places to go and have you know ishnan and obviously we're going to talk about uh muktsar sahib as well where people go and uh, you know and they they do ishnan there's a big mahatam like uh, there is big importance of having ishnan as well so it's all kind of intertwined together that guru sahib ji has given us just like how uh, when amrit is prepared you have the jal you have the pani and then you have the 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 bani as well they 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 together because a uh, water is the only element that can actually hold like the shabad so when you speak into or near uh, pani whatever you saying um, that has an effect on that pani so it it is a huge kind of like a difference on your physical self as well when you go and have these ishnans as well so guru sahib is saying that do that as well you go to these places you have that ishnan but at the same time you do sadha on the tur ishnan as well and then going to the gurdwara and having you know sort of charan tur just on a personal level uh, like i was saying before sometimes people kind of um you know say well you don't really need this physical uh, aspect to it it's just a metaphor you know the tur is and the people who kind of like doing jordan di seva and then you know kind of you know and then they put that that tood of when they wipe the shoes of the sangat and then they you know that dust that they collect in you know they like oh you know perhaps it's not uh um this is not what guruji meant right but from a uh, from a personal uh, experience i can just share you know a very simple thing uh, that's you know happened with me that sadu the tood the actual physical thing it's just like kind of um when i experience that of a actual real sadhu like um that can actually change and bring about a change within you which it did for me um because there was one um chardikala uh, gursik and uh, he was quite like a, a naam abhyasi like so you know he do a lot of naam simran and stuff and uh, i was just talking to just talking to uh, to him and then uh, he was just asking me like you know sort of when you talk to gorsik they don't ask like oh you know a uh, lot like world really things or you know of uh, you know have you seen the new you know series on netflix or whatever like you know things like that uh, but you know they just talk about the real thing they like you know has your amrit vela and i was just like well you know sort of um there's no kind of um, i was just like kind of you know well nobody asks me that like straight away so he <laughs> caught, caught me off guard and said look my amrit vela is non existent i'll be honest with you i find it difficult um and then he said koi nahi uh, ho juga you know don't worry you know maharaj ji likh karpa and then uh, that after that uh, then they they went in uh, to do uh, sangat and then i basically did jordan ji seva and then when i did jordan di seva that day and then i had the tood basically i rubbed that tood on my my forehead and maraj did you know sort of did did kripa that that like kind of like you know sort of all is all is it's like you know that laziness kind of that stops you i found that for like weeks on after that that kind of disappeared from me within you know, i felt that actual physical change so and obviously you have to kind of build on it and so maharaj will give you that uh to kind of like you know sort of kick start you and then you have to basically got to do the rest of the the hard work itself but for those few weeks after that i felt that you know something inside me just changed from just you know from sadhan di turi so i don't know how everybody else feels about it you know they have their own uh sort of thoughts on it but mine is that is also just as important we sangat di tur jehdi chaar diyan so mag majjan sang sadhu turi kar isnan so go to the guru ka this month go to those asthans like you know muktsar sahib or i you know harmandar sahib harmandar sahib guru ramdas maharaj ji sarovar have isnan and then also like you know sort of do the listen to guru sahib ji's updesh so and and all of that so that that's like the the month of mag that guru sahib ji talks about that where people used to go and do that uh, then they started focusing on sadh sangat as well 
so that brings us to the the third topic um i apologize if i'm going kind of like you know too fast and things like that but um um now the third one obviously is uh milla muktsar so as known as maggi you know uh and uh, the jali jali mukte the 40 liberated ones as they called jali mukte jade mukt ho gaye so mukti is mukti is liber- liberation and those 40 uh, sorry 40 got liberated now for this the background to the jali mukte's history so on this day uh sorry not on this day i can't remember it and then the jali mukte uh the actual day was but um it was uh on on that day the the jali got the 40 got liberated uh, but there is like a back backdrop there's a background to that story and then that's that uh, saki begins uh, in anandpur sahib so as most of you know that uh, anandpur sahib was a kila fort where uh, you had other kila around like you know sort of a uh, low guard uh, kila there is all case guard and uh, you know those kila that are around Anandpur Sahib, that's where Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj was for about almost about eight months. Guru Sahib Ji was there, and they were surrounded by uh, Das Lakh Pauj. Now, Das Lakh is a million, so those Pauj consisted of uh, 10 Lakh Jede Pahari Raja Sige, so the, the 300,000 from the Das uh, Lakh, so from a million, the 300,000 came from the Hindu hill Raja. And then uh, the rest kind of came together. Uh, the Mughal that were under the command of uh, Zabardast Khan and uh, Vajid Khan. Uh, and they surrounded those. And they were there. Uh, basically, they were called by the Hindu Raja because they wanted Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj out of the picture. So they tried before and... Uh, they felt that it is just impossible for us to defeat Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj. We need help. And they asked Aurangzeb's help and he sent another 700,000 pod. So they was, had surrounded the Kila of Anandpur Sahib, where Maharaj was. And amazing things happened. There's like a big Lama Itihas. So I'm just going to select a few things from it um, that are related to the Muktsar. And, uh, and the Jang of Jali Mukti. So, Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj is in there, and the Mughals now are finding, and the, uh, the Hindu Raja are finding it every single day so difficult to actually penetrate, penetrate through the, the walls of the Kila the gate of the Kila to actually go and either capture or kill the Sengs and Maharaj. And to the point where it became really embarrassing for them. There were like uh, not many uh, Sengs inside. Uh, obviously Guru Sahib Ji's family is inside. The Panji Piyare and Guru Sahib Ji's obviously Sahib Jare. And roughly about uh, sort of um, three to four hundred you know, Sengs and that with Maharaj. And there they are surrounded by Das Lakh, powered like a million. And it, it, it had become really embarrassing for them. And every attempt that they made to kind of uh, got into the, the Gilada fort, they were basically fought back and they suffered heavy, heavy casualties. They tried uh, cannons, uh, all sorts, different kind of uh, strategies, but they were all kind of um they all they were all unsuccessful so it came to a point where they decided okay what we're gonna do now because every time they would go close then the sings and maharaj inside would basically fire at them and then the sings would come out and then fight them and then they would suffer heavy you know sort of losses the Mughals and the hindu Raja would so they had stopped going near the killer so they had set up camp sort of miles away so there was an incident when uh, they were sitting about of just about two miles away so they had set up camp two miles from the killer where 
Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj uh, and fires a teed from Anandapur Sahib. Now, this teed goes and hits the little uh, manja like they're, they're sitting on. So this is Vajid Khan and Jabardast Khan. So these two generals of the Mughal Foy, they, and they were sitting there just playing Shataranji. Shataranji is like a, a chess. They were playing. And Maharaj sent a teed and then hit the, the leg of the, the manja that I was sitting on. Like a bed, you can say manja. Huh? And, uh, and he actually broke the pava, the leg, and it and kind of, uh, the, the manja obviously then fell. And then the, they, them two fell as well. And then they became really fearful, thinking that if Maharaj deed can you know, come this far, then we need to kind of like set the camp even further. And then Maharaj uh, fired that deed with so far, with so much force and accuracy as well. And then they were talking amongst themselves, thinking that Maharaj has some sort of black magic that he uses to, to you know, so fire these arrows. So, you know, it's not impossible for it. Uh, but then Maharaj fires another deed and that has a, a letter attached to it. The letter says that do not think that I am using some sort of power, some, some sort of magic to kind of, you know, fire these deed. And Maharaj says this is a result of a bias or practice that, you know, sort of we do every single day. This is the forge. Uh, this is the enemy that you are having to deal with. That this is our practice. This is our ball. This is our strength. We don't use you know black magic to do that. And then Mara said that I'm firing these teeth at you because you are meant to be fighting us, and here you are playing chess. Mara is kind of like mocking them, thinking it's to see kidding you. You know here to kind of play you know board games. You're here to fight and fight like men and come to the the field. But it wouldn't go near the Anandpur Sahib Kila. What had happened for, and then their next strategy was that they would basically surround all the area, all the villages, pens around Anandpur Sahib so that the food will run out inside. And once the food will run out, then obviously they'll, you know, they'll strengthen, their strength will weaken and we'll go and attack and then we can get whatever we want. So this was their plan now, uh, the Mughals' plan. So for like months and months, the food became scarce. And obviously, there were in, uh, incidents where the Sengs, some of the group, the, some like Sengs would come out and then go into like, you know, little villages and they'd get food and come back. But uh, Maharaj kept some of that sort of uh, food away from the Sengs as well. And Maharaj was sort of like rationing the food. And obviously, not just for the Sengs, but obviously Maharaj had Kore there the whole season. And they need food as well. And the Hati as well, Maharaj had. And, you know, that needed food as well. They needed food as well. But what Maharaj was actually doing was actually trying to uh, strengthen the, the forward, the things. So those of you who may at some point have, may have, you know, suffered, you know, hunger, uh, obviously, like, Living these uh, in the Western world, it's obviously if you're really unfortunate, you have that. But most of us, you know, go to bed like you know, not empty stomach. You know, we have all the food. But when food becomes scarce, that's the only thing you can think of. That's the only thing on your mind, Hannah. That you just want food, you just want to kind of you know something to eat. And then those things have not had anything to eat for like days upon days. And Maran still expected them to go out and fight. So they became really kind of like wary. And uh, sort of to the point, to the breaking point, where they just wanted a way out. They're like, we can't fight any longer, Maharaj. And Maharaj saying, you know, sort of have some prosa. Maharaj say, look, I'm doing this so that you, that inside of you, Andro, that you become pure from inside of you. That when you have no other icha left, even to that point uh, where you actually see certain death and to remain faithful in, you know, sort of in those times where you have absolutely, uh, you don't see any way out. And, you know, death is kind of like for sure. And, and if you don't let, let your faith waver at that point, Maharaj is saying that that's when the, the, the crunch is, that's where the crunching moment is. And if you can sort of, uh, Sustain yourself and survive that and have, find it within yourself to kind of carry on at that kind of vital point. That's what 
is the difference between a normal person and a Khalsa. Mother say, I'm here to make you callous. I'm here to make you uh, pure. So Maharaj was also uh, kind of instilling that in them. And Maharaj was also kind of like, uh, it was like a test as well. And then who would, who would pass? So a lot of them sort of became quite hungry. Uh, and then they came to a point where they couldn't kind of control it any longer. And then what the Mughals did uh, they played another sort of a game where they said, look, Maharaj, uh, if you just leave the Kila, we will not harm you, we will not hurt you. And then when those things heard that, that this is the deal on offer, they said to Maharaj, Maharaj, take that deal. They're saying they will not harm us. We all know, if you read the history, that you know they brought their promises. The Mughals swore on the Quran and then the Hindus you know, swore on the uh go and I'll art the go like on cow. So like, you know, they see the cow as a sacred animal and uh like uh on stones, on their salgrams, on Gita they swore, but then they went back on, on their oats. Huh? But Maharaj said to the Singh, just kinda of hold on, hold on. But what had happened, uh two hundred Singhs kind of like just couldn't take it any any longer. And they said to Maharaj, Maharaj, we're just gonna go. I see the chale jana uh, we can't stop here any longer. And they, and they went, basically. And there was a, another person called uh, Duni Chand. Duni Chand was the one. So like I was saying, it's like a lot of Itihas. Duni Chand was the one where Maharaj, uh, who Maharaj said to go and fight when the Mughals sent a, a Hathi, intoxicated elephant, towards the Kila. And Maharaj said that, you know, we have our Hathi as well. Bring, call Duni Chand, he'll go and fight. And then Duni Chand was like, oh, forget that. You know, I, I ain't going fighting an elephant. I'm going home. So he just went, you know, sort of home. And then 200 Singhs kind of like you know, left Maharaj. And then when those things, Singhs uh, went back to their homes, uh, they kind of felt really bad afterwards, saying that, you know, sort of we left Maharaj. And then um, those, uh, every pind that they, they belonged to, they went to, the, all the people in the pind were like, what, you know, what have you done? Uh, that you left Maharaj, this is kind of like, you know, a big pop that you've done. Uh, you shouldn't have left Maharaj. And then uh, they were ex explaining what was going on. And uh, at that point, the Mughals were hell-bent on basically finishing any of the things that they could find, and obviously Maharaj as well. So those, when those 200 things went back, they spoke to the village chiefs, and then those... Uh, all of them in the area of Majja. So they, that's where they were from, the area in Punjab called Majja. Na? So we see have Majja, you have Malava, and we have Dwapa. So those things were from like Majja. And then they decided to basically go and then uh, find Maharaj and then say to Maharaj that, Maharaj, uh, we made a, a mistake by leaving, but please listen to us that the Sikhi that you want us to practice, which includes fighting the Mughals, we cannot do. Uh, we want to be your Sikh, but we don't want that type of Sikhi where you're going to be fighting the Mughals. We want you to how it to become like how it was before, just just before these you know wars battles you know started. We want it to go back to that. And what we will do, Maharaj, is we will go and speak to Arangadev, and we'll uh, come to some sort of uh, you know sort of truce. And uh, plus, but please, you know, stop fighting the Mughals. And but if you are gonna uh, keep on fighting the Mughals, then Maharaj, then uh, uh, from from our side, we we will then basically quit as being you know your sick that we can't uh, carry on with Sikhi anymore. So this is what they decided uh, to go and sort of give that sort of uh, option, uh, put that option forward to Maharaj. And when they eventually found Maharaj afterwards, obviously the Chamkaur the Jang happened, uh, so Sabja the Siddhi happened, and then you know, so the Maharaj is leaving now. So then they uh, go and find Maharaj, where Maharaj is, and they say to uh, Guru Sahib Ji, so that Maharaj, uh, that this is what we have decided. We so we we are we repent what we've done, um, but. Maharaj, this is what we want you to do. Leave this path of, you know, waging war with the Mughals. Leave it. And Maharaj will be, will be your Sikh. 
But if you insist upon fighting the Mughals, then Maharaj, we can't be your Sikh anymore. So Maharaj said, okay, now uh, you deserted me once before. And Maharaj said that I wasn't expecting you back. And Maharaj basically says, I don't actually uh, need you back with me. And if this is what you've already decided, then do that. Uh, just write it on a piece of paper, Lekhdi Badawa, that Maharaj, that you, we are not your Sikh anymore, that you're not our Guru anymore. So they uh, then decided to write that. So those things that he came, they decided to, their representatives may I add. Now, among those 200, there were things uh, in there that didn't want this they were like but because uh they they were the ones who were put forward uh, when he came to talk to Maharaj they didn't want this deal but because they elected people to do that for them they kind of like went along with it but inside they didn't want it they were like really sad inside that this is what's what's happened now that you know they've written that badawa they've written on a piece of paper that Maharaj you are not our guru and we are not your Sikh. And included in, in that was Pai Mahasing. Now, Pai Mahasing and also uh, included in that Sangat was uh, Mai Pagodi, Mata Pagodi. Now, they were like Premi Sikh. Now, they were like real Sikh. They felt really disheartened that they, they didn't really want to uh, kind of like, you know, sort of, they didn't want no part of that deal. But because they had come with that group, they kind of like got associated with it. And then they, 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 they ended up being on that Badawa as well. But they actually just came to have Darshan of Maharaj. Mata Pakorji just wanted to come and have Darshan of Guru Bin Sanji Maharaj. And so did Pai Mahasing. Uh, that's the reason why they came with the rest. Uh, but they, they didn't actually believe in that deal. So after the deal happened and then Maharaj kind of you know, carries on, they then uh, decide amongst themselves, there's those Panja Singhs, the Mahasingh, and there's a few other Singhs, they said that, you know, we can't do that. We are not going to, uh, we're not going to uh, become Bemuk. We're not going to turn our backs on our Guru. That Badawa, that, that's been written where we said that we're not, he's six and he's not our Guru. We're going to get that ripped. So the only way we can do that is if we uh, fight and die for Maharaj. At that point, the, the Mughals were still chasing Maharaj. So that Vajid Khan was still chasing Maharaj. So there was a lot of forward that uh, was chasing Guru Sahib Ji. And uh, they had come to a point where you call that, uh, there's a place called Khadrani Di Tab. Now, Khadrani Di Tab was a place, it's like a, it was a dried up reservoir. And uh, it was kind of like overgrown with trees and bushes and things like that. And then it also, and then he had like a um, some flat ground which was chosen uh, to kind of uh, make like a last stand for for those things. It said, "We're going to fight here, and we're going to die here. We're going to stop those uh, Mughals uh, from you know going after Guru Sahib Ji." So those things, and then their Ginti, like, and then when they actually uh, went back and they spoke to that group of uh, Sengs who came from Maja, who kind of brokered that sort of, you know, sort of who wrote that in Badawa. Uh, out of those five, when they said that we are not going back, some others joined them as well. And then their whole Ginti in total, they became 40. So those 40 then stayed behind and then they fought at uh, that place, Khadrani Di Tab. And those 40 then killed a lot of Mughals. And amongst those 40 fighting, was Mata Park or G as well. Um, and then though the rest of the things became uh, Shaheed Ba Mata Park or G. And Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj had moved on, but from a point was watching the whole battle. And then he was actually fighting thieves himself from where he was. And then he saw all the things fight and became Shaheed. So after the, the, the jungle was over, Maharaj went to every single Sikh that had fallen. And then Maharaj basically, you know, sort of wiped clean their faces uh, with, with his, with his Safahana. And he kissed the forehead of each Singh. And then what Maharaj was doing was Maharaj was just giving like boons and Maharaj was just giving 
like uh, so much blessings to each Singh that fall, uh, that had fallen. And then Maharaj gets to Mahasingh, and Mahasingh still had a few breaths left in him. And then Maharaj picks him up, and then he, he in he his eyes were closed, but he knew that he was going to go. But he wanted Maharaj's darshan for the one last time. So Maharaj goes there, and Maharaj says to Mahasingh, "That Ma- Mahasingh, open your eyes, that I'm here." And then as soon as he hears Maharaj's voice, his eyes open and he sees Maharaj. And Maharaj is saying, look, you have fought so bravely. And then Maharaj is going around and saying that to all the rest of the Singhs as well, that this is my Ti Hijari Singh, Charlie Hijari Singh. What that meant was that this one Singh has had taken on and killed 30,000. This one has killed 40,000, right? So then Maharaj said to uh, Mahasingh that, Mahasingha, ask for whatever you want. That I'll give it to you. And Maa Singh said, Maharaj, that badawa that we wrote, what I want you to do is rip that. And then Maharaj did exactly that. Maharaj said, that be, I'm a part of the So that, that, you know, sort of um, uh, badawa that you wrote, where you said that, you know, my second, I'm not your guru, that is no more. You know? You're all my, my, my second and I'm, I'm your guru. You know? So, and then my Maha Singh became Shaheed. And then that place, uh, that Maharaj said that, there will be uh, Gurdwara Sahib here. And then, uh, like how these 40 have been liberated, uh, whoever comes and does this anan here, comes here, they'll be liberated as well. So that's like the 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 Muktsar. So that's the, the, the Saki of the Muktsar. Now, I I understand uh, this, that um, I had to miss out a lot of, so there's a lot of kind of like gaps, you're probably thinking that, but how did this happen? How did that happen? So um, my apologies because there was so much in there and I'll try to cover everything I can. So, uh, but if there's any questions, uh, then uh, you can ask. Kanji. Yeah, if anyone has any questions, um, you can ask now, Faisal. Well, don't be shy, guys. <laughs> it's open. That's all right. and, um, you can ask any questions you want about what you just learned, if you need to, any clarifications, anything you don't understand, and what you just heard, or, or if, even if it's off topic, any questions you need. And um, you can definitely ask right now. Hanji, Hanji, yeah. So, like I was saying, my apologies is that because when you have there's so much history, kind of like your mind kind of just gets overloaded. And uh, my mind was getting overloaded with uh, so many, uh, so many things. So I probably kind of have like, missed uh, some things out, and then some things probably didn't link. Uh, so uh, if there's any any gaps, thing like that, you know, by all means, you can ask me. But if not, you know, that's all right as well. Um, Hanji? So you said that anyone that goes there and does a Ishnan, Hanji, Hanji. Uh, liberated, right? Hanji, but Hanji, yeah. Isn't that kind of cheating? Like, you just go to that one place, you do Ishnan, and you and you get more. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, no. That, I don't know if you were um, listening to. Uh, to the katha in the in the beginning, so it's it's not just about say tari you know you do bab like and then you know you just go and have it's not and then you liberate it. You know? So that's not that's not it, uh, how it happens. But Mara is saying that this is an town and the the whole history that goes with it. You know? So those who uh, and read that history, read how those Jali mukte how they became Bemukhana from Guru Sahib Ji and then realizing the mistake that they made and then, then they came back and how they actually uh, fought uh, the battle of you know, Muktasar and then uh, got their uh, sort of, you know, a, a barb washed that way uh, in the end doing the Tian of, of Guru. So when you go to the Guru Kar, when you're having the Shanan there, it's the the history that goes with that as as well. 
So when you read the history, it'll inspire you to make sure that you never become bemuk of Guru Sahib, right? And Sikhi kadha kamoni, how we earn Sikhi, uh, and what makes us uh, a Gorsik. And look at the jeevan of uh, Pai Ma Singh. Um, look at the jeevan of, you know, sort of, uh, you'd go and research the jeevan of Mata Park or the... So it's like a, a, a collective thing, right? So that is attached to an asthan. And obviously, when you go and have a shanan, you'd have, you, Maharaj, what Maharaj does is gives you like that uh, sort of like start, you know, like that, that, that kind of like a, a push. You know, like sometimes, oh, you know, you know, sometimes you have to push, push start it. And then once you push start it, and then it kind of like starts rolling. When you go to these asthans, the energy that these asthans uh, sort of have when you do an Vishnan, it gives you that initial boost to kind of like then kind of build the rest of your jivan on. Huh? Yeah. Andy. So it like starts you on the on the path on the path. So you can Andy, Andy, and gives... then yeah in your life then you'll be able to do the things that give you mukti. So it just starts you on that journey. It starts you on that journey. Absolutely. It's just like say you know when you if you're gonna uh, start a business you need some capital yeah to start. Mm-hmm. And then what Maharaj, when you go to these asthans that are linked with history and has that bakshish from Maharaj, Maharaj starts off with that little bit of capital that you're going to build the rest of your kind of like, you know, a- empire, which is like your Bhakti Jeevan huh? on. So that's why these asthans are, are important. That's why the, these rovers are important, because it gives you that, that initial boost. It, it gives you that initial start. Yeah. Anji. Anji. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Ji. That's fine. That's a good question. Very good question. All right. Uh, any questions? Bhai Sabji, I had one question. Uh huh. Um, you know, you're talking about Bhai Maha Singh. Anji, Anji. Is that the same one that's from Mashivara? Is that a different one? The from uh, the Machiwari uh, jungle to the town, yeah, honey, honey, yeah. So that that's the a different one, oh, okay, honey, honey, that's a different one. Mm-hmm. Any more questions? Like if you have any anonymous questions that you want to ask but you don't feel comfortable talking um, the mic, then you can just DM me um, and I'll ask them for you. Okay. I think okay, I'll there's, uh... there's one question that's just coming. Okay, okay. Um, how do we find the time to really do Prem Bhakti in our everyday lives? Oh. And I think um, it's just like um, uh, anything else that we do in our life, to be honest. We have to kind of make time for it. Uh, and uh, the best thing is to do in in most cases if you have a good routine and you can have a good routine huh? uh is to set aside some time like for the one that you love you know, you know like we have we we set time aside for our family you know uh our partner you know husband wife uh, for children you know we take time huh? and if you want you know sort of praying with paramatma then you have to set aside some time huh? And then Guru Sahib, he talks about the, you know, the, the, the best time you're going to, you know, find is uh, sort of at night time or Amrit Vela. Huh? So it's about a routine, getting a routine. Most of us, including me, you know, don't get to sleep till about, you know, uh, 
at night. And then if we think that, you know, we're going to be getting up to do bhakti, then, you know, people like me can just forget about it. You know what I mean? You might do it for a couple of days or you know, a week or so, then you exhaust yourself. And it's about, you know, getting a routine um, and then uh, sticking to it, sort of getting to sleep on time, uh, waking up uh, and then even if it's, uh, it's like Mara says, that if you step, take one step towards me, he'll, he'll take like, you know, Gorda Banda. So he will take millions of steps towards you, towards you. Huh? So if you make that initial kind of uh, sort of start, then Maharaj will help you. So even if you're waking up for half an hour, and even if you just wake up for half an hour, an hour, and then go back to sleep, that's like still you kind of, you know, getting into a routine. So that's what I would say is that, when we plan everything else in our life, plan a bit of bhakti in your life as well. And it might kind of like start off as a chore, as like something, you know, mechanical. But once you keep at it, it will turn into prem. Holy, holy prem, but you have to kind of, kind of like keep at it. You may feel that, you know, you're not getting anywhere or, you know, you're not getting the, the rust out as, you know, you should. But holy, holy, you'll, you'll, you'll obtain it. Was that the the question? Uh, yeah, that was the only question. Does anyone else any okay. other questions? Remember, you can always uh, DM me if you have any yeah. anonymous Andy, yeah. questions. Yeah. Vikas, Guru Karan Singh, that's. Panji, uh, what do you mean? You know, it's all up to you. We got all the time in the world. I think the most people like a lot. We've got a lot from you know America, Canada. They're like five to eight hours behind us anyway. They got the whole day. Oh, sure, sure. Well. Uh, let let me uh, consume the rest of their day as well. Then, uh, so, you know, I can, uh, <laughs> I can start some other uh, another another vijar, and I can perhaps share recipes. Uh, I tried making uh, noodles yesterday. A bit of so I tried doing some Chinese cooking, um, but uh, I just ended up doing tarka to some noodles basically. Uh, so it wasn't. Chinese, it was just sort of desi noodles. So I can share that recipe if anyone's interested. <laughs> Anyone have any questions about noodles now? <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, I would just like to say thank you so, so much to Pai Saab for coming out here today and doing this gatha. Um, Sangaji, if you enjoyed today's event and would like to support our guest speaker, you can donate via PayPal to sukirsing at yahoo.co.uk. Uh, the link is in the question box and text for voice. And um, yeah, thank you so much, Baisab, for coming out today. We really appreciate it. And if there's anything else to need from our side, just please let us know. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to just say, as I was just saying to you, uh, you know, Gangadeep saying that. Um, it's it's just about kind of you know sharing uh, sort of stories of our Tiyas and Guru Sahib Ji, and that's all I really. Um, and then you know my time, uh, I believe, is is Sapala anyway. So uh, you know, sort of uh, thank you so much again for having me. Uh, we have and, one more question uh, very quickly. Oh, honey, um, honey, yeah. One more question. Um, so it's not about noodles, us... is it? No, 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 not about noodles though. Um, okay. So normally we hear about. Um, the mag the mahina that like the mahanta of kind of the you get jada fal for doing more bhakti you get more reward so could you just talk uh -huh. a bit about that quickly please and yeah so it's this is an incentive uh that uh guru sahib ji gives hana that uh each each month guru sahib ji talks about will take about something that happens in that month uh, so either like related to a tradition, like in this month, it's about the Ishanan, 
going and doing Ishnan. And then Maharaj would, would take that and would, Maharaj would relate that to... Uh, um, Maharaj would then relate it to Sikhi, na, to give the message. So everything, uh, like I was saying before as well, that Maharaj gives you that initial kind of push. Uh, so when you start walking the path and uh, when you attach yourself, like Guru Sahib Ji gives you Vidhi. Na, so Vidhi is something like technique. So uh, getting to Paramatma also requires a technique as well. And Guru Sahib Ji has that technique. And that technique is contained within Gurbani. And then when we talk about uh, months, Guru Sahib Ji gives us a technique about the months, how to start off your month so that, you know, you carry on like how you, you know, sort of uh, you, you start in your month so that for the rest of the month, you remain as focused, right? So, and then what Maharaj does, is if we listen to Guru Sahib Ji Pradesh and do that, then Maharaj will help us uh, kind of uh, live that that message for the rest of that, that month if we choose to start off with that message uh, for that month. So uh, for several, you know, sort of Magda Mahina or any month that's us, whatever you Guru Sahib Ji uh, is telling us to do in that month, if we uh, kind of, you know, act upon it, then Maharaj will help us. Uh, like I was saying before, Maharaj will uh, take millions of steps towards us achieving a certain goal. So if, like, you know, sort of we, we like I was saying before, we have a, a sort of routine. And like, if we have in our timetable, like, you know, so we, uh, this week I'm going to do this, or next week I'm going to do this. Like, if we are at work, you know, work have projects as well, or this is going to be our project, you know, going to run for these many months and this is what's going to happen so if we look at Sikhi and we become smart with it and use the techniques that Maharaj has given us in Bani then uh, it comes quite handy and those months what happens is when we start practicing what Maharaj is telling us to do uh, in those months then Guru Sahib Ji gives us that push to achieve that goal in that month as well so it becomes like kind of uh sort of special in that sense um, although it's applied to all year around but for that month Maharaj will kind of accelerate you at that part of your Sikhi to answer the question um, who, uh, is it written different about Baramaha in Tukhari and Manjwan uh, yeah so Baramaha Tukhari is written by Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj and uh, Baramaha Maharaj is written by Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj. So the Baramaha Tukhari, it's more kind of for Jagyasus, like uh, meaning those who are on like a spiritual path already and they, it kind of like has like really deep kind of like meanings. Whereas Baramaha Maharaj was when Baba Buddha Ji and some other Gursiks came to Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj and and they said, Maharaj, that uh, Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj did a Bara Mahaya. Uh, that's obviously for, for Jagyas, who's kind of like, you know, those are advanced kind of like stage. Uh, but for this, for armed people, everyday people, uh, what they understand, could you give us a Padesh about the months to kind of like those, for those, those of us who kind of like, at like a, you know, beginner's level kind of thing. So, uh, although, uh, Barama Maharaj also has really deep meanings as well, but they are um, easier to understand sort of initially by people who are like kind of be beginners on the you know path of spirituality. Yeah, answer, answer. Yep, yep, singles answer the question. Tiga. Thank you so much for that, Pai Sabji. And, uh, no, no, thank you. Asked thank you a few you. days as well, so it's kind of short notice. So no, no, thank you, thank you again, and uh, my apologies if uh, I put anyone to sleep or um, <laughs> if I, you know, kind of made you throw your phone or break it. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> thank you so much for coming, and um, you know, Sangat and Bob, yeah, Jodi, yeah, yeah. So, but to see the so good service, that to hegi, to come here, regular to this. No, no, thank you, thank you so much. And maybe next time I'll share my um, my noodles recipe. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Let me see you.
ठीक है जी तीन समाप्त कर देते हैं फिर जी ओके जी ओके जी वाह गुरु जी का खालसा वाह गुरु जी की फतेह संग जी कैन वी प्लीज गेट अ जकारा बोले वाहे गुरु जी की फतेह